Democratic National Convention airing all this week. Uh, and uh, tonight wrapping up with former Vice President Joe Biden uh, giving his big speech. And Professor Thomas Schwartz joins us. As I mentioned before this break, we do have a couple of phone calls here and we want to get right to them. Thanks for holding, Taylor. How are you, sir? Well, good evening, Roy. I'm, I'm fine and appreciate you having a professor on there tonight. Sure. Have you been watching? Uh, what, what's on your mind? I've watched every bit of it. As okay. a matter of fact, I uh, uh, caught some of the stuff in the middle of the night when I woke up. But mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to first say uh, something a little different real quickly. The Tennessee legislature did an absolutely great job the other day reenacting the suffrage vote uh, that took place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I, I commend all those guys. They all played the uh, actor parts. Yeah, yeah, the, they did, uh, and they brought in passion. some professional actors. We showed a few clips. It was really uh, <laughs> a really cool thing to see. Well, I, I, I think they, they they should be commended and Good. appreciated for that. Now back to this convention. Uh, you were talking about the uh, TV viewership. I think when it's all said and done, even after tonight, the biggest uh, crowd that they probably had or ratings was when Michelle Obama spoke. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought she probably did the best of any. Mm -hmm. I was. I thought the President Obama. He did more community organizing talking last night mm -hmm. than he did. Uh, the qualities and uh, the uh, confidence that uh, he, he, he has uh, in, in the vice president, not that he didn't throw him a few bones, but I thought his uh, speech went in a lot of other directions yeah, okay. uh, rather, rather than that one. I think uh, Ms. Clinton reinvigorated the fact that nobody... I mean, she's she's wore out, and and yeah. her her uh, problems over losing the uh, election just continues um, on every appearance, yeah. and has gotten gotten very old. The okay. uh, uh, Miss Harris spoke more last night about trying to personally identify her life with other women right she's got a void between age 30 and 50 that's going to come up more than she would like and more than the party would like and uh, she's uh, last night you would think she raised those two daughters of her husband but in fact she's only been married five years and they were grown yeah. uh, by the time they got married so that fell on deaf ears, but but we'll see. That's going to be one of the most contentious parts of this election. Joe okay. Biden is definitely a nice man, but Joe Matt Biden right. is old. He uh, will be older than me, and I have been older than the last three presidents. I was, okay. I was really disappointed when... <laughs> Bill Clinton was elected, and he was about a year younger than me at that time. <laughs> I thought, well, I guess that shows my age. But now it may reverse in this one. We'll see. But, All right, Taylor. Uh, Thank I, you. I think that age is a problem. Have a good night, fellas, and thanks for the show. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I want to bring up that he brought up President Obama's speech. Uh, for a long time, uh, it was kind of an unwritten rule that once you leave office, you, you kind of get out of politics and you don't criticize a sitting president, especially the way he did. Uh, he did go there, but I mean, it's not that it hasn't been done before. I mean, Bill Clinton has gone out on the campaign trail. Uh, president Bush, George W. Bush, has, has pretty much avoided it. They may endorse a candidate, but they avoid the campaign trail, and he has said repeatedly, I don't believe in that. I don't believe you should you should criticize your right. your predecessor. Uh, but President Obama, you know this this loss, Hillary Clinton's loss four years ago. A lot of people read as kind of an indictment, or President Trump has said it was an indictment on his eight year administration. So he hammered away. Yes, he did. And uh, you know, presidents have. Uh, you're right that it was an unwritten rule. Um, in the past, what happened is they would often. 
uh, leak stories to reporters who would uh, comment on their unhappiness with their successor. Right. Um, President Carter, for example, was very unhappy with Ronald Reagan um, and very unhappy with the Bush uh, brothers or Bush mm -hmm. presidents, both of them, um, even to the point of, uh, of uh, with George H.W. Uh, Bush um, attacking uh, the Persian, the first Persian Gulf War. Uh, so a lot of that was known to insiders. They just weren't as public. Right. And that was the real unprecedented aspect of Obama last night. Although the thing is, with President Trump breaking so many of the norms of what it means to be a president, and right. breaking them in himself, um, I think there's a sort of loosening of that old president's club um, and that sense that you don't talk ill of your uh, successor. Right. All right. Let's go to Linda now, who is on line two. Hey, Linda, good evening. Hello. Thank you for holding. What's on your mind? Well, I'm sure I'm not going to be popular after this. Okay, that's all right. Speak <laughs> speak your mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just get so tired of um, Trump putting down Biden or anyone else, for that matter, about their intelligence or whatever. Trump has got to be the dumbest person I have ever seen in public life. I mean, what sane person would tell someone to inject disinfectant? And what about what he did yesterday with the Goodyear thing? Just because they can't wear their MAGA costumes to work. I don't know. He's a worthless, evil, hateful man. And... I just hope they put him out. Have you, have you, Linda? Have you been watching the uh, convention this week? Yes, I have. Uh, obviously, it's a change from what we usually see. But what have you thought? Well, overall, I think most of them. You know, I um, I was impressed with most of the speeches. Mm -hmm. Hillary, I was never a fan of, and she just seems bitter. I think, mm -hmm. but I. Senator Harris, I thought she did really good, and Obama, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm anxious to see Biden tonight, and of yeah. course, Jill Biden, I thought she was really good. All right. Well, thank you very much for calling in, Linda. We appreciate it. Okay. Sorry to unload on you. No, like it's that. fine. That's what we're here for. It's called open line for a reason. <laughs> okay. All right. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Let's quickly go to another call. we got Leon holding. Hi, Leon. Welcome. Hello. Hey, Leon, turn the TV set down for us and go ahead and talk on the phone. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, comment on, on Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, he's a narcissist. He's a white supremacist. And anybody who votes for him has the same like, like it's the same like mindedness. That's all I had to say. All right. A lot of people venting tonight, uh, Professor Schwartz. Um, it, some of the other things that we've seen, what, what are your other takeaways from, from the convention and how they've had to, uh, you know, uh, just totally rework how this is presented? Uh, celebrities and performances and whatnot. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, I think uh, some of it, you know, I thought, for example, the roll call, the 50, uh, mm -hmm. 50 plus 57 territories and states, that was done creatively, you know. Having, yeah, I've heard a lot using, of positive using feedback. Using the opportunity yeah. to do that. That, that. that was very interesting and, you know, certainly captured something. Um, for the most part, though, I think some of the other stuff is a little... It, 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 it probably plays to those who want, who are really excited, but uh, it, it may it may be one reason why the ratings are low. Uh, it's, it's not, it, it, it can get a little tedious. So uh, it, you have to be more committed to watching. And um, some of the, that's one of the reasons why the national networks, for example, only give an hour. Uh, the cables start in much earlier and yeah. cover more of the convention. The, the national network, um, the, the three major networks have only given one hour at the end of the day. Uh, it's focusing on just the major speeches. Looking ahead to next week, the Republicans we know initially were going to be in Charlotte. Then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. Charlotte, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was the mayor or the, or the governor of North Carolina, but they just said we can't, we can't risk it. We can't do it mm -hmm. with all these people. Then they uh, found a site in Jacksonville, Florida, and that fell through as well. So what do you do if you're the Republicans? Are you watching what the Democrats are doing and maybe making some last minute fine tuning or adjustments to things you liked and didn't like? 
Um, I would think if they were clever, they would be. Yeah. They would be watching. Now that, that's not. There are some things that sometimes just go on because people are committed to it and will do it. Right. But I would hope that. Uh, I mean, if they, uh, you know, Donald Trump has shown a, a sort of capacity for entertainment, then he, uh, uh, his people would probably be certainly conscious of that or recognizing what might not work uh, for them um, compared to the Democrats. Um, Yes, I think I think they should be watching and should be trying to figure out what might keep the show more uh, riveting or at mm-hmm. least keep people interested longer than uh, sometimes have been the case. So. Uh, the, one of our callers mentioned uh, earlier, I think it was Linda, who talked about Michelle Obama's speech Monday night. Uh, obviously, she's an extremely mm-hmm. popular former first lady. A lot of people had hoped that maybe she mm-hmm. would throw her hat into the ring. Uh, she has said she's not mm-hmm. interested in politics, but she gave... She gave a strong speech Monday night. She's a good speaker. Um, and one of the things she really focused on was character and empathy, which, it, it, you know, obviously mm-hmm. they're trying to draw a distinction here between Joe Biden and, and President Trump. And also, yeah. I, I think one of the strong points of that is during a pandemic when so many people are, are feeling uh scared and frightened and also just exhausted from this and being able to push that word empathy you think that was effective oh yes no i think that's a that is something uh, even even people who support donald trump would yeah. say that the, the, the empathy is not something we'd associate with him it's not one of his stronger characteristics if he has it at all and I think Michelle Obama hammered on that. She hammered on his statement, it is what it is, when he, he commented on the deaths from coronavirus. So, yes, I think it, given the situation, the, the emphasis on empathy um, is something I think that has been important to Biden's rise in the polls. On the other hand, it's also something that could turn, were, were there to be a decline in, in uh, fear yes. about the coronavirus, say the say a vaccine or something like that it might be not as effective right right and in that, the final election but but you know time is running out for that so yeah exactly uh, and i think I, they have to play that card i was going to ask you that about the the pandemic obviously uh all pretty much every governor mayor and the president uh anyone in an exec executive capacity around the country has been criticized no matter how they've handled this, because there's just no playbook for this. We've never seen anything like this before, and things have changed. We've learned things along the way about the virus, um, and, and so we've had to change and, and adapt. Um, if, indeed, things seem to be, knock on wood, leveling out a little bit as more people are wearing masks and social distancing, um, yeah, how does that play? Could that play into the president's favor if, say, in October... We, we see that some of these trials, these fast-track trials, things are looking good, numbers are dropping. Um, that could very well help the president, right? I think so. I think so. It, 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 it's obviously, I think, the, the sheer disruption um, has contributed greatly to the fact that Biden is, is ahead in the polls. Um, but the fact that Trump is still in the game, that, that he's still at least within shooting distance, does make you think that he could uh, possibly yeah. uh, make the election much closer um he's not going to win i think uh, you know i, I would uh, if i had if i were a betting person i bet that he's not going to win the popular vote because of the sort of lopsided nature of some of the states like california and new york but the battleground states yeah. are so close there was a poll today that showed minnesota tied and trump didn't even win minnesota in uh, in uh, 2016 right. he came right. very close but so he's still in the game. Um, he, it, it would help him to get some good news on the vaccine trials and to get some good news about the progress of, uh, toward getting some sort of control over the mm-hmm. uh, pandemic. But um, he's, uh, he's certainly, uh, I think the, the election is still likely to be a close one. All right. With that, we're going to talk more about the polls coming up. Uh, I've got a few more questions for you after this break. And uh, we get another caller holding. Caller, hang in there. We'll get to you right after this. Stay with us. 